I'm going to show you how you can calculate the inversion count indicator for yourself using Excel. The inversion count indicator is a wonderful way to eliminate subjectivity from yield curve predictions. So to do this calculation for yourself, you're going to have to access the US Treasury website and you're going to need some proficiency in Microsoft Excel. Let's get started. So here's what you need. First, you need to go to the US Department of Treasury website. In this website, you're going to be able to find all the yield curve statistics. This is where you have the daily yield curve rates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to select the current time period. I'm going to go with all. I want to get as much information as I possibly can. So once the information is loaded, what we then see is that we have the yields. We have the yields for all the different maturities of the bonds from one month all the way up to 30 years. Now you will notice that there are some rows that show NA. Those are the years that did not have that particular bond. For example, in the year 1990, they didn't have the one month and the two month bond. They also did not have the 20 year bond in the particular year of 1990. As you scroll down the years, there are also some years that did not have other bonds. For example, the 30 year bond uh, was not around in the early 2000s. But that's okay, because the inversion count indicator would consider many of the different yield spreads. Imagine if you specifically only looked at the one month 10 year, then you wouldn't even be able to get any predictions in the year 1990, because the one month view just didn't exist in that year. So even then, this is how the inversion count indicator can help to smooth out the entire process. To download this data, you can use various different web scraping techniques. But of course, let's just keep things really, really simple here. All we really need to do is just to click and drag and highlight everything. I'm going to go over to date. I'm going to click and drag everything and I'm just going to drag all the way down and just keep going until I have all my information. Yes, you might think that this is a very silly way of doing things, but for those of us who don't have a lot of programming language and we rather not do uh, any web scraping or come out with lines of code that will take us hours and hours to accomplish, just clicking and dragging for about a minute or two actually accomplishes what we need to do. There, everything highlighted. Copy, and this is where I'm gonna paste it into Excel. So here I am in Excel and I'm gonna paste everything that we have just copied here. So I'm just gonna mouse over to the very first box over here, right click, and I'm just gonna paste everything. There, so all the U information is here. We'll just do a quick check from the date. I'm just gonna go right down to the very, very last row which is on the 6th of May of 2020, which is, sorry, the 5th of June of 2020, which is the day before I'm recording this. So we have 7,615 rows, that's 7,615 trading days ever since that first day in 1990. So great. These are all just the, the yields though. So what we need to do is to get the yield spreads of every single one of them, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be creating many, many new rows. The very first few columns are going to be benchmarked using the one month then versus all the other maturities. For example, it's gonna be one month minus two months, and then one month minus three months, and then one month minus six months, and so on until I'm done. And the last one will be one month minus 30 years. And then once that is done, I'm gonna move over to two months minus three months, two months minus six months, and so on. Now for the column title over here, I'm just gonna give it a convenient name. I'm gonna call it BC. The reason why I call it BC is because BC would mean taking column B, which is the one month, subtracting away column C, which is the second month. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now the formula I'm gonna use to do this is, I want it to produce a value of one if my column B is higher than my column C, which means that there is an inversion. My one month is higher than my two months. So I want, I want column N here. This value here, I want it to give me a one if there's an inversion. If not, I want it to leave, give me a zero. Simple enough, right? But what would be the formula that I'll have to use then? Well, typically speaking, the, the formula will be relatively simple. You can use a simple if, if column B is larger than column C, give me a one, else give me a zero. But unfortunately, that simple if else formula wouldn't really work. The reason is because there are certain years where some of the months have no yields, right? So for example, in the year 1990, we see that the one month and the two month have no yields, and the 20 year also has no yields. So the formula that I'm gonna use will then be a series of nested ifs. So the formula goes like this. First, check if my reference cell, which I'm gonna use as the one month, is it an NA? If it's an NA, simply return me a blank and let's move on. Now, if it's not an NA, the same, uh, next thing I'm gonna check is check my target cell, which in this case, I'm gonna be checking my, uh, my one month versus my two month. So my two months, my target cell here. If my two month is an NA, return me a blank and then let's move on. So it's a series of se sequential steps. If neither of these are NA, then let's do the calculation for me. The calculation would be 
Is my reference cell one month greater than my target cell two months? If it is, give me a score of one. If it isn't, give me a score of zero. So here's what the formula would look like. The formula would look like this equals to if check that my reference cell is an NA. So if this particular cell equals to NA, return me blank. Else, go to the next if. If my target cell is NA, then return me blank. Else, go to the next if. Then in this case, if my reference cell is larger than my target cell, then return me a 1 or else return me a 0. And there are three ifs here. And I see that my answer is blank because both my reference cell and then my target cell are both NAs, right? So it gave me a blank, which, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to use autofill to make my life a little bit easier, which means I'm going to have to lock down a particular cell. The cell I'm going to lock down is I'm going to lock down my reference cell. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of B to lock it down because I'm going to click and drag to the right and I want my first, my, my one month reference cell to stay the same. I'm not going to lock down the number two though, because number two would mean I'm, I'm going to I'm going to keep it at row two. But that's not what I want because when I autofill downwards, I want all the days to roll as well. So I'm only going to put a dollar sign next to the B. So I'm also going to change the dollar sign here next to the B, and that should be what I what I get. Now let me just fill up the column titles first. So this is B C followed by B D. So this is all for the first month. It's all blank because my first month reference is blank anyway. Then I'm going to autofill all the way and then everything is blank because my one month is blank, right? So this, this is okay. It's going to be blank for now, but eventually it's not going to be blank because eventually, notice that at the end, there are values here because the one month will come to play in later years. Okay, so that's the one month reference done. Now let's repeat this for the second month uh, as the reference, the two month as a reference. Now this time, I'm going to label my column as C and then D or C and E up to C to M. There's no longer a need to do C to B because we've already done, done that for my very first one month reference. So as we go down, there are less and less columns that we need to generate. So let's generate those columns first. And what formula are we going to use for our C to D? Well, it's very similar to this, but I can't just autofill here because my reference cell has changed. So when I do my autofill, I'm going to have to change my reference cell to C2. My target cell will then be D2. You'll notice that the reference cell is the C here, the target cell D is the D over here. So let me just do a check all the way to my last row. Yep, there are values here, so this is correct. And this is what we need to do, and then we just keep going on. So when I start to do the column D to M, something happens now because my, my reference month now is the three month and there is a value for the three month already. So immediately we start to get some values, which is good news. So everything is correct. Click and fill everything and then we start to see some values of our inversion counts appear. So all is going well. Let's move on. Okay, so that's done. It took me a while, about 10 minutes. In 10 minutes time, I managed to do all of these things. Uh, so you probably can do this too. Some of you are probably saying, hey, I know macro and I can do this much faster than you. Please go ahead. I actually prefer doing this the slow way because it's quite easy for me to keep track of what's happening. True, yes, it can be a bit problematic and quite frustrating, but there, I've done it. You can do this too, no problems. Now, the very last thing I need to do here would be, let me just highlight this cell in yellow. I want to be able to count my sum. So I'm going to call this my ICI. So calculating the sum of the ICI is now a very, very simple and straightforward affair. All we need to do is sum the columns in that same row, beginning from that first uh, ICI count. So the formula will just be equals to sum and then we're just going to click this all the way to here, the very first column that we started doing our calculations. Press enter, ta-da! That's it, answer is 6. From here, autofill. There, that's what we get. So these are the ICI counts for that particular day. For example, this, this day in history is 13, this day is 10 and so on and you can take a look. So majority of the days are actually zero. Majority of the days are zero. So actually that's quite interesting. Now you're probably thinking, I don't want such a big and extensive uh, spreadsheet. It's not very useful to me. So what can I do? Well, it's really very easy. Copy this column and then paste it in another sheet. For example, I'm going to copy it here. I'm going to paste it over here. Oops. 
I should just paste it as values. Paste as values. And then I can go back, go to my very first column, come over here, and I can paste it. And that's it. Then you would have your dates every single day of the of the every single trading day and the ICI next to it, and hence you can do your own analysis, you can plot your graphs. Let's just do a very quick check to make sure that the very last row is in line. Yes, the very last row is in line, you've got the same number of rows. And that's how you get your ICI, your inversion count indicator using Excel. Many of you will probably be saying, I know a faster way of doing this, by all means go ahead. Myself, I actually prefer to use R, and I have a code in R where I use for loops to do that. So in a, in a future video, I will do a bit of R coding to show you how this can be done in, in R. But uh, if you are not familiar with R coding or not familiar with Python programming, and you just prefer to use the, the old fashioned tested and true Excel, this is what you can do too. So that's it for this video. This is how you can calculate the inversion count indicator. I hope that this has been useful for you. And to my next video, thank you for watching.